Hey guys, what is going on? This is Carnivore 5 and today I have a video for you talking about the difference between walks per nine and control and some other factors that go into uh, pitching in general. Um, we're going to be using Madison Bumgarner as our guinea pig, I guess you could say. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two, uh, two recordings here. We're going to do one where he has max dot walks per nine, one where he has zero walks per nine. We're actually going to start with zero walks per nine first. And what else, uh, or what else we've done is we've modified the control on each pitch. We gave two pitches, 99 control, the four seam and slider. Uh, we want to make sure we have one fastball and one breaking ball in there. We also gave his curveball and two seam or zero control. And then his changeup, we just put it at 50 control. These aren't his default ratings, right? I mean, everything else is his default ratings except the control, I should say, and the walks per nine. Uh, so when we do that, he jumps, or he drops all the way down to a 79 overall. So that does show you how much walks per nine does affect the overall. Um, Next, we're going to show you guys some, some gameplay of the zero walks per nine, talk about the different interfaces and the impact it has on the game, now, as well as show you the difference between uh, the controls too. So we're going to try to break all this down for you guys, so bear with me and stay tuned for the gameplay with zero walks per nine. Welcome back guys, we are in pitching practice here. Uh, keep in mind we have Madison Bumgarner at zero walks per nine, we have our slider and four seam at 99 control, curveball and four seam at zero control. So we're gonna compare and contrast these pitches. Um, the first thing that's most important, and again, I'm showing you the four seam right here to realize is that each pitch type affects the ease and difficulty of your pitching interface and how accurate you'll be. This is the four seamer. I'm just showing you guys. Four seamer has 99 in control. Now compare that to Madison Bumgarner's two-seamer down the middle here. It looks about the same, right? They're both really, they're both pulsating um, really big because of the fact walks per nine is at zero. So right there is your answer if you're looking for uh, walks per nine is more important than control and we're gonna further, um, we're gonna further prove this as the video goes on. So please bear with me. Um, some other factors, like I'm saying, pitch type has a huge impact and I'll show you guys the curveball and slider. Now the slider, this has 99 control, but you can tell it's a little bit bigger than even the two seam with zero control. All right, it will maximize that. And the next I'm gonna show you the curveball, and there is really no difference at all. And if there is a difference, it is really subtle. All right, that's a change up actually. The change up's at 50 control. But here's the curveball. See, it's pretty much the same with the slider. It's, it's freaking huge. So pitch type has a huge impact. Um, and guys, we're mainly gonna stick with pulse because visually it is the easiest to demonstrate to you guys uh, how walks per nine control affects the pitching interfaces. I'll talk about the other interfaces a little bit too at the end. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna, we are gonna stick with pulse. So again, this is the four seamer. I mean, it's pretty hard to minimize it. You can see it it maximizes to be freaking huge, bigger than the strike zone. And this is the two seamer, pretty much the same. All right, we try to minimize as much as possible. It's still pretty big, mainly because of walks per nine. So we're seeing that 99 control does not have that much of an impact on anything. And we're gonna further prove that. Uh, we're gonna go into another clip guys where I have maxed out walks per nine. And we're still gonna have the same pitches with the same control, uh, four seam and slider at 99 and curveball and two seam at zero. So stay tuned for that clip. All right, guys, we are back uh, in pitching practice. Now we have 99 walks per nine assigned to Madison Baumgartner. And I'm gonna start to show you guys the huge differences uh, that walks per nine has on gameplay in your pitching interface. We're get using pulse again. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys the four seam and two seam. Now keep in mind the four seam still has 99 control and the two seam still has zero control. This is the four seam. You notice how much smaller that is and how much more easier that is to control. Um, the pull, it still pulsates at a 25 pulses per 10 seconds. I still tested that. Um, but what it's doing is it's a lot smaller and it's a lot, e it's, it's a lot easier to minimize. And uh, I don't know how to, how to word this, but uh, you can't maximize it as big um, compared to last time. I think you guys get the gist uh, of what I'm trying to say here. But there's the four scene. 
Now here's the two seam. This has zero control. All right. And I'll show you guys at the end uh, a comparison snap of the two, where I both have uh, I had both perfect releases on them. All right. They're exactly the same, pretty much. Pretty much exactly the same. Um, now, if there is a difference, and this is sorry, this is this is where it got kind of hard to determine uh, what control actually does. So I think this pretty much confirms that walks per nine is way more important. Walks per nine is directly impacting how easy it is to manipulate my pitching interface, regard regardless of its analog meter or even classic. Um, as you can see there, here's the four seam. And here's the two seam. And for the sake of the video, I can't really show you guys meter and analog. Just trust me on this. With analog, um, it's going to be a lot more sensitive with a lower walks per nine. And when you have a higher walks per nine, it's it's going to kind of magnet you towards the spot you're trying to hit more often than not. Same for meter. Uh, when you're pitching when you're pitching with meter, think of it as a sweet spot of the bat. Um, think of it has think of it having more open timing uh, and has a higher chance of a green. So the higher walks per nine you have, the more easy it is to hit your sweet spot when using pitching meter and uh, vice versa. The smaller your walks per nine, the lower it is, the harder it is to hit that sweet spot. So again, four seam and two seam. There's the four seam. Here's the two seam. Exactly the same, guys. Just trust me on this. Um, now, if there is a difference, and this is where I started you know, coming up with some theories, um, if there is a difference, and I'll show you guys slider and curveball, this is a slider. If there is a difference between the two, um, I'm only going to say that control uh, has a very, very minimal impact on gameplay. If it does anything in the game, I have one of two theories. Uh, one, it affects the consistency of your pitches, meaning like if you get a perfect release, you're going to hit your spot more often than not, but when you barely miss, you're not going to get punished as bad. That's considered consistency. So it might affect that. I also believe it might just be a slight, slight modification to the overall walks per nine attribute. Again, this is the slider. So what that means is if I have a pitcher with 99 walks per nine and a pitcher with zero control, uh, it's gonna say they have a cap of 10%, or something like that. It might affect my walks per nine by nine points and it might drop his, you know, walks per nine down to a 90. Um, and then, you know, the complete opposite would be you have 99 walks per nine, 99 control. Um, it might modify. It won't modify it at all. It'll still stay at 99 walks per nine. Uh, so I mean, that being said, if it goes from zero to 99 like that, and this is what we're doing in the test, we're not seeing much of a difference. Um, that would mean that a lot of pitchers that have 50, 60 control and then really good walks per nine, is that you're not going to notice the difference at all. They might drop one to two walks per nine if that theory is true. So my conclusion is that walks per nine. Um, well, this isn't a conclusion. This is a fact. We both see it here. Walks per nine has a much bigger impact on gameplay. Uh, I can't really prove it in any other way than showing you guys pulse, and then you guys should test it yourself. You'll be able to notice. Um, however, control either has a very, either has no impact on gameplay, or it is to the fact where it's so minimal, it's going to be irrelevant anyways. Uh, it might affect either consistency or it might modify walks per nine, and. Uh, that's pretty much it. So if you're looking at pitchers in Diamond Dynasty and which pitchers are going to be easier to have good control with, you want to pay attention to that walks per nine attribute. It is extremely important. Um, walks per nine does have an impact on gameplay as you're seeing here. Again, this is the slider and I'll show you guys the curveball. As you see the curveball, again, we have, remember, we have zero control. All right, there's the curveball and then we'll go back to the slider. See, it's roughly about the same. If there is a difference, it's very minimal. Uh, but I think the point of this video is to get the information out there to you guys that walks per nine is definitely the superior attribute, and that's the one you want to focus on. Um, so yeah, and before I conclude this video, I do want to talk about the differences in the uh, interfaces a little bit and just show you guys. Like I said, a meter, I believe it opens up the sweet spot a little bit more. Here we are throwing the four seamer. All right, I'm not going to hit my spot every time. But it's just easier to get good releases with it. With a higher walks per nine, that is. Meter is still really difficult to use, though. 
Like, I'm not even... I have 99 walks per nine on. Pitch 99 control. And it's still hard to hit it. But you can see there, we barely missed and it was still off. So, that's with meter. They're all going to have an impact. And trust me, I tested it with zero walks per nine. It's it's even more difficult. I think with analog, though, you can, even, you can tell a... Uh, difference easier so I feel like with analog it kind of guides you to that spot it kind of magnets you to your uh, spot more often than not whereas lower walks per nine it's gonna be more sensitive and it's not gonna have like a Mac you know you know what I'm talking about like an uh, in Call of Duty like there's an aim assist I feel like there's almost an aim assist of the analog the higher walks per nine um, and the lower walks per nine I feel like there's kind of like no aim assist and it's just it's more sensitive now, one thing that control might have an impact on, and which I'm not going to get too much into depth here, that is the classic pitching. Since it is purely determined by attributes, um, control might have somewhat of an impact here, since like there is really no input. Uh, so we saw the fastball there, and then we see the two-seamer here. Just control, I'm just tapping it. You see the two-seamer's way off. Let's try the four-seamer in the same spot. See it. I mean, you can see that they're both really not even close. It seems kind of random too for classic. That actually hit my spot. Two seamer actually hit the spot there, so it just seems really random. Um, so in conclusion, again, I will I'll reiterate this: walks per nine is way more important than control. If control does anything in the game, it's very minimal. Um, it might affect consistency or it might modify walks per nine slightly. Um, the one thing control might that actually has a impact on is classic pitching which I'm not really gonna get much into or it might have uh, more of an impact for simulations but for we're looking for Diamond Dynasty players or for online rated players or pitchers to use you want to pay more attention to that walks per nine uh, attribute thanks for watching the video guys um, if you guys have any more questions follow me at Twitter at car number five let me know what you guys think the difference between the two is uh, it's actually quite funny I did a poll a couple weeks ago and a lot of people thought control had a bigger impact so um, All right, guys, so I also have a, uh, a snapshot comparison of the two on perfect releases, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, and this is one snap I want to show you guys where I got uh, two perfect releases. Um, this is when I had 99 walks per nine, and the two seam has zero control. The four seam, again, has 99 control. Um, again, two perfect releases, and they pretty much look identical. Uh, I, bet I really didn't notice much difference at all. Um, if the control rating does something, it's it's very hard to prove, and it's very hard to get a feel for what it does. Um, so yeah, those that's the snap comparison I had to show you guys.